All right, go for it. Hello, everyone. My name is Jake Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Real Sales Dynamics. I'm Johnny Graham. I'm Jacob Graham. And we have a very interesting series ahead of us. Through this series, we're going to be breaking down on a step-by-step -step basis on how our door approach works. And we're going to go in a lot of depth on how these five steps allow us to get one in three contacts made turned into solar appointments in the most competitive market in the industry, San Diego. Let's walk through that. Jake, what are the five steps that we use? Preoccupation, you have to establish a problem, you have to solve that problem, you have to pull back and then transition to slash tighter. Sure the place. Is this still the team residence? Yeah. Perfect. I'm following up on a notice that was sent out to you guys back in July in regards to the second phase of your guys' smart grid project. I'm following up on a... Okay, so what he did here, it seems really subtle, but breaking preoccupation simply means grabbing the customer's attention from whatever they were doing and pulling it into your attention stream. Um, there's some really important ways. The way you intro this will really set the tone for the entire conversation. So it, while it might seem subtle, it's a really quick clip. I want to examine a couple of things that he said. He first said, I just want to make sure I'm in the right place. Is this still the team residence? Am I in the right place? If you says, yes, this is the so-and-so residence, you're in the right place, then obviously you belong there, right? That's really important. And he also enters it with their name, which We'll show you how we do that. Uh, we use a sales rabbit, a really high-end version of it, and you'll see the link below. It actually gives us the customer's name. I really can't recommend it enough that you have sales rabbit as a part of your arsenal. If you know the customer's name when you first show up, it really does establish that, hey, this is where I belong. Hey, I just wanna make sure I'm in the right place. Is this still the team residence? You'll also notice too that he doesn't walk up and go, hi, my name is Jacob with so-and-so company. That immediately causes a customer's barriers to fly right up. You don't wanna do that. You wanna be down in tone, I'll give you an example. Hi, just making sure I'm in the right place. Is this still the team residence? A lot of amateur reps are like, hi, I just wanna make sure I'm in the right place. Is this still the team residence? And they say everything with a up to, uh, what we call it up speak, right? So they'll go up in tone with everything. They'll make a statement sound like a question and they'll keep doing this the entire time of their pitch. And they learned this when they were little kids and they were asking mom if they could go hang out with their friend. And so that's, you don't wanna do that. You always wanna go down in tone. It doesn't give you, uh, it gives the customer an established feeling of authority. So, hey, just wanna make sure I'm in the right place. Is this still the team residence? Boom, you don't sound like a salesperson. That's the way to intro. Also, another thing of commentary to take notice of is look at his body language. He's not squared up with the person, right? He's not taking over the entire porch. He's standing to his side, letting that energy flow from himself out to the street. I know you're just seeing a very brief clip of this and we're talking a lot about it, but breaking preoccupation is arguably probably the most important step in this entire thing. It sets the tone for the entire conversation. If you show up with your, with your hat and your clipboard and your polo and you look like a salesperson, you're gonna be overcoming so much adversity right from the very beginning. If you say, hey, I'm just making sure I'm in the right place, is this still the so-and-so residence? That seems like your car broke down down the street. I mean, look at his entire demeanor. He looks like he's almost inconvenienced by the fact that he has to be there. That he, and so think about that when you're on your door approach. Don't walk up and shoot yourself in the foot immediately by looking like every other sales guy, squaring up in the door approach, coming out there with your hand out, introducing your name right from the very beginning. And like I said, it's so valuable to have the customer's name in advance. It's one of the most beautiful sounds to a person is their own name. So please click the link below, check out Sales Rabbit. Merry Christmas. Sometimes I feel like somebody's watching. How you doing? Did you see that the state did mandate SDG&E to get 50% renewable by 2030? Did you see that? I mean, I've kind of, I don't know, I've seen a bunch of different things. The, the issue that they're having mm -hmm. is, uh, for, for a lot of these homes, if your bill isn't super high, getting mm -hmm. people to buy or lease solar panels usually doesn't make a whole lot of financial sense. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
And if you end up qualifying, yeah. um, the same way you didn't pay SDG and to run the power lines in the home, they own, maintain all their equipment. You just get the power from it. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same concept as that. If your bill is low enough, then we pay to put up panels that we own, we maintain them, we insure them, and you get the power anywhere between like 30 to 50% cheaper from the panels gotcha. than what you're getting from the actual power lines. Right, right. But like I said, your bill can't be too high. Right. You know what a typical utility bill runs you? Like 600, 500, okay. it depends on the like, month. Okay, that works. Like I said, your bill can't be too high. How do you typically do your billing? Are you doing it online or paper? It's online. Online? Yeah. That, that's even easier. So my job is super simple. I just got to look at this graph right here. It's on page one. I think I know what you're talking about, the graph on it. Yeah, have you seen one? this graph? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just got to look, look at this graph right here, and then I got to check your electric meter. Do you know what side of the house the electric meter is on? Over there. Yeah. Side? All right. Yeah, yeah. I look at your meter, um, pull up that bill, and I'll just like meet you back right here. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's so nice. This is a good meter. Clean it. Nice 250 amp panel. It's good. I like it. Cool. So I just got to see that graph. It's on uh, page one of the electric bill. I can, I can is show it you. The, is it the PDF? That's exactly yeah, what yeah. we need. Go ahead. Perfect. What do you do for it? Uh, I'm just a caregiver for her. Oh, so, yeah. During so in 2016, uh -huh. SDG and came out and upgraded your guys' electric meter okay. from the traditional disc meter to the smart meter. And oh, yeah. what that did is it set your home up for solar. So right. your meter now allows power to go both ways, both okay. into the home and back out to the grid. So you can measure both. The yeah. Flow. The biggest issue with solar is it doesn't work at night. Right. Right. right? Yeah, and yeah. so what what happens is during the day your panels produce power right, not only right. for your home. But it also it kicks it over to them their house. So this house yeah. right here produces power for this entire neighborhood. Okay. That makes sense. And so, but what SDG &E does is they produce the power and then they sell it to us for like thirty six to fifty six cents a kilowatt. Right. right. And so, and then they get the credit. And then during the night, when they go to pull from the grid, it ends up flatlining their bill. So they have the exact same utility bill every month. And I don't know if you saw, but SDG &E just got approved from December to January for a nine, another nine percent increase. So the one people of, that were making those decisions. Right? It's Not wild. Crazy. CEO of Semper Energy makes $14 million a year. That's crazy. It's nuts. That one again. There we go. There you go. Cool. That's all I need. So we're just going to show you how this works. Mm. Is So uh, do you remember back in 2012, we shut down some of our major power plants, the but Chula Vista and San Onofre plant? Wasn't here. I've heard about it. This, do you know the San Onofre plant? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when we shut down those plants, since then, all of our power has been coming in from out of state. Yeah. It's like Arizona and Nevada. So when you look at the cost of your power, it's not the power that's expensive, it's the transmission and distribution. Right. right? So the cost of your power was only $71. Then to transmit it to the state of California was another 55. Then to distribute it through the power lines was another 111. If you end up qualifying, it's super simple. All we do is change how that power gets to the home. Yeah. It ends up working out. It cuts your power anywhere between like 30 to 50%. So like I said, it, your guys' bills just can't be too high. So I just gotta take a look at this graph right here. Yeah. Can you screenshot that for me? Yeah, yeah. Can you text it to you? Yeah, you text it to me. Like I said, if you guys if you guys do end up getting approved, it'll mm. not the cost of your power anywhere from like thirty to fifty percent, but it is something you guys do have to get approved for because right, it's right. a fully funded program. Gotcha. So Okay. So who owns the panels in this situation? Do you know the like company Sun Power? I've heard, yeah, I think so. I so know. there's so there's two major solar companies right now in the in the state. There's Sunrun, which is the nation's largest solar company. Okay. And then you have Sun Power, which is the like number one solar company, right? They're like the Apple of of, of solar. Okay. Um, so they own the panels the same way SDG &E owns all the equipment into the home. Right, right. Exact same. So Sun Power makes the investment. They own it. They maintain it. They insure it, and you get the power directly from the panels. Right. Cheaper than what you're getting from the power lines. Right. Right, okay. And so um, SDG &E is already, they're just a shipping and handling company, right? They yeah, don't yeah. produce the power, they right, just ship yeah. it to your home. Gotcha. And so we become your full-time prov energy provider oh. and it allows you to get your power um, from the panels way cheaper than what you're getting from the, from the power lines. All right, now, when it comes to establishing the problem, this is establishing the pain point, uh, the reason for why you're there. So step one is we broke preoccupation, took the person and brought them into our attention stream. And step two is gonna be creating the problem. Maybe it's a problem they were aware of or they weren't aware of it at all. Now, there's two big problems that actually affect Californians. The first problem is the shortage of electricity. So a lot of these utilities, they'll put on what's called a time of use charge. This is a charge where they're going to penalize a homeowner for using power during high demand hours, high demand, that four to nine period time slot, where they'll charge sometimes almost 50 to 60% more for the power during those hours. 
And those are the second problem he's gonna to allude to, and this is so important, this is really what stands our pitch out against all the competitors, is we focus on people with their low utility bills. If you've spent any time knocking doors, you're gonna recognize quickly that the vast majority of people that didn't go solar, their reasoning was, my bill wasn't high enough. If that's really the case, then you need to learn how to be offensive in your selling and put that into your pitch. So we established two problems. Problem A, that, the, that there's not enough power here in the county and we need to actually bring that extra power in. And problem B is that your bill wasn't high enough to justify going solar. Now when I say bill isn't high enough to justify going solar, that's entirely subjective. That's entirely up to you. And so when somebody says, yeah, my bill was like $200, didn't seem worth it, we can still cut that person's bill in half. That's still too high by our measure. So when we say, yeah, you know, this program is for people with lower utility bills in the past, it didn't make sense for them to go and spend thirty to $50,000 putting panels on their roof, you know, that's when the homeowner goes, yeah, you know, I looked at solar in the past, it didn't make sense for me, that's exactly the boat that I was in. Now, when you express a customer's objection before they've had the chance to do so, you don't even have to overcome it. They immediately see you as being on their side. Remember, it's impossible for somebody to argue with you if you always agree with them. Okay, now that we've established those two pain points, it's now important that we come in with the solution. So the pain point A was you're getting charged between four and nine, a heck of a lot more than you should. Problem B is there wasn't really a solution for people like you. You're a good person, you would have done solar, but your bill wasn't high enough. The pain wasn't high enough to justify the solution. So what is that solution? Well, that's creating power on site. Most people don't understand where their power comes from. It's, it's kind of like a hot dog. Everyone enjoys it, but no one wants to know how it gets made. Now, when you look at your power, it's exactly the same way. Most of your electricity is coming from natural gas plants that are, out, uh, that are from out of state and they're imported hundreds of miles, making it very expensive to get the electricity to, toward, uh, to your home. If you don't believe me, look it up in the New York Times. They recently came out with an article on this back on January 4th. You can find it right here. And they explained how these utilities are actually charging people a heck of a lot more for their uh, power because of all the shipping and handling costs that go with it. So what's the solution to all this mayhem and all these high pricing costs? Solution is simple. We're gonna put the power plant right on your roof. If we put the power plant right on your roof, you get your power from five feet away versus from 500 miles away. Is it less expensive or more expensive to have your power you know, imported a big distance? Is it more expensive or less expensive to have your dinner Uber eated to your home or is it cheaper to make it at home? It's the same exact analogy here and the exact, exact same process. If we can make the power right on the person's roof, we can cut down all of those shipping and handling costs and bring their overall bill down anywhere from 20 to 40%. Now, a little note here. If you tell the homeowner, we're gonna cut your bill in half and the savings are outrageous and it costs you nothing, the BS meters start flying off. A customer goes, wait, wait, wait. You're telling me this costs me nothing and it's gonna cut my bill down in half and I don't have to do anything? More amateur sales reps will be like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what you should do. My recommendation to you would be like, now if it works out, uh, we might be able to take you off that four to nine time period rate and put you on a lower cost. It's usually anywhere from like a 15 to 30% savings. It's nothing huge. When you say that, the homeowner goes, oh, okay, so it's gonna be a slight savings. It sounds like it'll be a little bit of a challenge, but okay, it's not gonna be like, you're not, you're not overhyping it. You're not throwing off their BS meters. If you're saying you're gonna save them a little bit versus saving them a ton, they're more likely to believe it. Life is full of these little contradictions, and this is one of those. If you can tell a homeowner that they're not gonna save as much, you know, that it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna cut your bill in half, but it might save you anywhere from 15 to 30%, two things are gonna be accomplished. One, they're more likely to believe you, and two, you're gonna be able to sell that contract at a higher price. Let's keep going. Gotcha. So okay. my job is simple. Um, with this graph, I'm going to create a design and this will let me see, I'll create a design to be able to do 100% of this power. Mm -hmm. and, and then we set up timing at like 10, 15 minutes. I just show you, hey, this is where the panels are going to go. This is what it looks like. And gotcha. if the numbers make sense, um, then you're really in the driver's seat. But if it's not something that works out for you, I text you ahead of time and let you know like, hey, this isn't something that works. Gotcha. So. We can either do it. We can either do it um, like Wednesday of this week, or we're gonna have to wait till. Um, I would actually. Well, I guess. It, I guess it, I didn't realize what, it's over the weekend. Yeah, I mean, I it, guess we could. We could maybe try for Wednesday this week. Yeah, I have let, to check can with we, them. Let's but, let's shoot for Wednesday because, okay. like I said, SDG needs getting approved for a nine percent. They just got approved for a nine percent rate hike. Gotcha. And so that means the cost of the solar cost is actually going to go up as well. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's let me see what I have Wednesday. Uh, what time? You, what time are you typically done? With like work or oh uh, i mean i'm technically working right now so i mean usually like the in the uh, like early afternoons is better because um, we have a bunch of like our whole routine in the morning um mm. but could we do i have a one o'clock could we do like three o'clock on wednesday 
Yeah, yeah. It's pretty quick. It yeah, takes like yeah. 10, 15 minutes, and I'll just show you. I'll be like, hey, look, this is where the panels are going to go. This is what your new electric bill is. And like I said, if it ends up working out, it's just cheaper power. So. Right, right, okay. But you guys, you guys do have to qualify. So. Pullbacks. This one's crucial. I see a lot of reps lacking this in their pitch in a very big way. If you don't do some pullbacks in your pitch, the customer is going to feel bulldozed. So let's do a quick review. First thing you're going to do is break preoccupation. Second thing you're going to do is create the problem. And you really need to create the pain there because if the pain isn't there, the solution isn't going to mean much. Then when you come in with the solution and they start to feel the alleviation from that pain, you're going to want to then pull back and take it away. When you've alleviated a pain for somebody and you start to take away the source of their alleviation, their inclination is going to be to reach out and take it back. Now, if a homeowner is reaching for your product or service and they want it, now it's a decision that they made by their own conclusion. So I'll give you an example. When Jake goes, hey, the problem is we had a shortage of power. Your power bill isn't high enough. We solved that problem by putting power here on your roof and we cut your bill down. The only problem is, is that it doesn't work for most homes. In a lot of cases, we actually can't help you. And so if your bill is too high, if you know, your roof isn't in good condition, whatever it is, then we're probably not going to be able to help you. And so there are a few things that we do have to make sure that you can qualify for this solution. And the homeowner goes, well, how do I qualify for this solution? When a homeowner says, how do I qualify or what are the steps? How do I actually solve this problem? Now they're openly engaged in, the, in your product or service. If you're not pulling back regularly, then you're pushing down. And if you push any product down a person's throat, you're gonna have so much more cancellations. I, I see a lot of reps do this online where they're going out there and they're really bulldozing a product down a person's throat and you don't really get to see how few of those deals actually make it to installation. When I'm pulling back the entire time going, ah, I don't know if this will work. I mean, yeah, the problem sucks. We may have a solution, but I don't know if this will work. Don't shoot the messenger. You're gonna have a huge success rate when it comes to your installs. And most importantly, the homeowner is gonna feel like they have to do something to get this product. They have to be involved. The human condition doesn't believe anything is for free. If you wanna shoot yourself in the foot, start walking around in sales and saying the word free. I promise you're gonna throw up every red flag to every person you ever speak to. If somebody feels like they have to be a team player, they have to be patient, and there's gonna be some work involved in getting your solution, you're gonna have a client that you love, a client that loves you, and is gonna be helping you each step of the way. Okay. All right, so how long have you been here? Mm, six years. Where, where you're originally from? Denver. Oh, no way. I used to live in Denver. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if you saw my, did you see my place? My no, Colorado, I, didn't I got Colorado that. plates. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. yeah. I was in uh, like born and raised? Yeah, yeah. So I was in like the Broomfield, Westminster area. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah. Do you know where, uh, do you know, I was right down the street from, uh, do you know where Swans Lake is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was right. I lived right on Swans Lake. No shit. Yeah, right, right down the huh. street from the Denver Stadium. Interesting. So cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, cool. All right. Well, I, I got you in the calendar for Wednesday. We got Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Gotcha. And it's yeah, pretty yeah. simple. I'll just come show you. I'll show you the designs. So I'll show you exactly where the panels are going to go. Yeah, like I said, yeah. it's it's pretty sweet. If you end up qualifying, you we there's no out of pocket cost, and you guys get the and you get the power way cheaper. Gotcha. So, okay. Cool. All right. Well, I'll, I'll swing on by Wednesday. And uh, if you have any questions, it was a pleasure to meet you, man. Yeah, you too. Pleasure to meet you. Good to so. know you guys. Broken preoccupation, we've created our problem, we've solved our problem, and we've taken it away and made the customer reach out and try to take it back. Now, what's the next step? Tie downs. Tie downs are very important. You have to now take all this information and all this effort that we've put in and hopefully you've done a good enough job where they now want to find out, hey, how do I get this solution handled? So the first question you're gonna ask is, hey, no, is this normally a good time for you? Is this time of day normally best for you? If you say, is this time of day normally best for you? You already caught them at home during that time of day. The odds of them saying yes is pretty high. You'll also notice Jake gives them a couple different options. You know, uh, is this time work okay for you? Is there another time? Um, is the best number to reach you at 619-818? If you give people two options to choose between, like does this time or this time work, or is this number or this number the, the correct number, you're giving them two options that both work in your direction. So it's very important now that you tie down a solid appointment and you do it while the person has all the information. If somebody gives you the objection of, oh, well, you don't need to think about all of this, well, then you need to loop back, go through the problems again, build the pain, create the solution, do the pullback, and then shoot for the tie down. But if you don't tie down and get an appointment and bring all this conversation back down to earth, then you're missing out on all the fruits of your labor. It's very important that you do repeated tie downs. So, hey, this normally time work best for you. And also another tip, you wanna have both, uh, both spouses there, all decision makers present. So if you can't tell if the person's married or not, you can say, hey, so is it just you on title or and like, oh yeah, my wife is also on title. And you go, okay, cool. So is you and your wife, are, they, are you guys normally here this time of day or is the evenings generally better? Uh, yeah, you know, evenings are usually better. It's not, hey, can we meet tomorrow? 
That's, that's going to be a yes or no. Never ask yes or no. Is, it, is this time work better or this time work better? Is your number 818 or 619 or whatever the, you know, the area codes are in your area? So keep those things in mind. Tie downs are important. Pull it down strong. And then most importantly, tie it up with a really great conclusion. So, okay, I have you down for tomorrow at 6 p.m. and I have your number at 619, blah, 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 blah. Now, you and your wife will be here. You said, okay, cool. Can I count on the both of you being here? If you say, can I count on the both of you being here? you're gonna have a huge increase on your, on your, on your sit rate. If they go, ah, oh, actually, I don't really know, then you go, hey, so what's a better time? And you know, set a better time. The last thing you want as a rep is to go out to a deal, go to a homeowner, talk to just the husband or just the wife, not have the spouse there, go through your two hour presentation just to get the, oh, I need to talk to my spouse. That's the worst thing you can do. If you go over numbers and everything, you've just lost the deal. So it's very important that when you tie down, you get their number, don't give them your number, okay? Don't give them a card. I can promise you that's a huge mistake. It's a very amateur mistake. If you give the person your phone number and your name, they're immediately gonna text you when it comes time for their appointment, maybe 10 minutes before the appointment when their favorite Netflix show is on, and they're gonna say, hey, sorry, the kids had to go to the hospital, the whole family died, and there was a horrible tragedy that we're all suffering. It's amazing how many terrible afflictions happen to a homeowner moments before the appointment. So it's important you don't give them their, your, your number. If they ask you for it, tell them, yeah, sure, I'll text it over to you. Don't ever send it, okay? That's a bad idea. Um, also with your tie down, it's very important that you set that appointment within 48 hours. It's kind of like that TV show, The First 48, where if you don't find somebody within the first 48 hours that they go missing, you'll almost never find them. So it's so important that you set that appointment within 48 hours because most of the information that you've gone over will be out of their minds by the time day three happens. And they won't even remember why they set the appointment. So it's important that you capitalize on the information while it's fresh in their mind Get the commitment of, hey, can I count on you to be here? And also maybe set the expectation of, I'm gonna need a corner of your table to write up some notes and get your guys' feedback on. And if they say, well, why does my wife need to be there? Well, she's on title, I need to explain these things to her too. So, important, tie down. It's crucial that your pitch evolves with the market. If you think using the same pitch that you used three years ago is going to apply to today, you're mistaken. You're gonna sound like the same mediocre rep repeating the same old lines as everyone else. And if you're a closer or even worse, a manager who isn't out regularly knocking, then it's really important that you watch this video right here above and see exactly why you're making a big mistake. It's you're gonna be out of touch with the market and the advice you give could end up hurting your reps. Also, if your buddy who's working in solar sales hasn't responded back to your Venmo request yet, he probably just hasn't seen this video, go ahead and send it to him. Remember, the hardest door to open is your car door, and sometimes you just need a little extra skill to help you get out into the territory and make it happen. And lastly, if you're tired of your manager just giving you a clipboard and a motivational speech and throwing you to the wolves, we are hiring. We're in, currently in California, we're all over Florida, soon to be Arizona and Texas. Please apply below. We turn ordinary reps into extraordinary ones. Once again, thank you so much for watching. You clearly care about your career if you made it all the way to the end, and we're gonna see you next week.